There is something else uh, that I wanted to show you again, uh, something, something strange. Okay, look, I've put the card right back into the picture like so. There you go, five clubs, in it goes. And uh, right here in my pocket I've got a, a black scarf. You know, every magician at some stage needs a, a black scarf like this. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just cover it like so. And in a few moments we're going to see something, as I said, very strange. Please, could you just place your hands right around the, the scarf like so? We're going to count to three. One, two, three. Take it up, lift, and look what happens. The five of clubs has jumped right out of the deck uh, like so. I call that the greatest escape. <laughs> How did you uh, do that? Well done. Well, listen, uh, it's been a pleasure performing for you all. Uh, I hope it, uh, it uh, was fun for you all. I hope to see you again at some stage in the very near future. Bye-bye. Hello, Melanie. It's uh, very nice to see you again. Melanie, are you aware of the oldest dream of man? Well, let me tell you what it is. It's to fly, to be able to take off and discover the universe. What I'd like you to do with your index finger is point to a card, and when you're ready, just slide it out to the front. Perfect. Now, the card that you have just chosen, do you know what we're going to call it? No? Icar. Just like the one who burnt his wings because he moved in too close to the sun. Watch carefully. Quite strange, Icar's dream. And it's this dream you've just witnessed live. I'm going to show you something uh, very strange. I'm just going to mix the deck like this. And what I'd like you to do is to take out a card from the deck. Have a look at it, making sure that, of course, I don't see it. And when you're ready, you can place it back anywhere you want in the deck. Once you've done that, uh, you can uh, give it a good shuffle. That's, uh, that's perfect. Right, so I'm sure you'd agree that at this stage it's impossible for me to find the card. But what you can do is, you, you can help me find it. So what I'm going to do is borrow your watch. So if you wouldn't mind just taking it off. Yeah. Wow, that's a beautiful piece of work. So what we're going to do is, we're going to take the cigarette and place it at the end of the strap. Now what we have is a, a lie detector, uh, which we're, we're just going to place on the table like so. There we go. Okay, so we need a little bit of imagination for this. So, you, you remember your card. What we're going to do is we're going to try and find it. So, to speed things up, I'm just going to ask you, is your card among these here? No, okay. Uh, is your card among these? It is. Okay, fine, 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 fine. So, so we have how many cards here? Uh, ten, uh, ten or so, I'll just get a little mix. I'm going to show you the cards one at a time, like so. At the same time, I'm going to ask you uh, to keep your finger on the end uh, of the strap. Go ahead. Right. Now that it's uh, it's charged, you can uh, take away your finger. Now, remember, I'm going to show you the cards one by one, and systematically you're going to say no. So, basically, at a given moment, you, you will be lying. Okay. Put your finger here. 
Attention, attention. Was this the card you chose? Was it this one? No, okay. Was it this one here? No. We don't have any left. Was it this one? No. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Take your finger away. That's uh, that's strange. Uh, so uh, look again. Was it that? No. Ah, there you go. You're uh, you're lying. All right. Okay. Take your take your finger away. So it was uh, the the five of clubs. Okay. We have uh, discovered a real uh, lie detector. Thank you very much for uh, for your help, and uh, you can have your watch back. merci. We're going to try something uh, quite impossible right now. Uh, please uh, have a look at the cards. Uh, it's just for uh, the magicians that are looking in. Uh, the, the, the cards are there are normal. They're not marked anyway. You know, we're not going to spend three hours looking at them. Just go ahead and uh, give them a good shuffle. Trust me. Once you have uh, shuffled them, you can uh, place them uh, right here on the uh, table. And in a moment, sorry, what's your name? Stefan. Okay, Stefan. In a moment. I'm going to ask you to cut the deck uh, wherever you want, uh, without uh, without letting me see. And uh, you can sh have a look at the card, show it to your friends, uh, and you can even show uh, these gentlemen uh, over here to uh, to my right. Go ahead. Uh, cut the cards wherever you want. Uh, ha have a look, show it to your friends. I won't cheat. Uh, I'm just going to cover my eyes. And uh, once you have placed it back, uh, let me know. Okay, fine. So you have chosen a card, uh, and a deck of 52 cards. You have uh, cut anywhere you wanted to. And now it's uh, quite impossible for me to find the card. But uh, that's exactly as we're going to do, using this uh, magic picture. Have you ever seen one before? No? Okay, well, take it there, have a look, step inside, and make sure there's nothing uh, peculiar, that there's nobody hiding inside uh, that could cause any problems. Uh, what does it look like to you? Classic picture, okay, good. Stefan, uh, have a look. It'd be a shame if we found somebody inside that would complicate matters for us. Okay. Okay. Right, we're going to just give the cards a, a little mix like so. There we go. Now we're just going to uh, take the cards, uh, give them a shuffle and uh, place them uh, inside the picture like so. Now, the gentleman who gave me this uh, told me that if I shake the picture like so, a card jumps out of the deck. <laughs> Stefan, uh, do you uh, remember the card you chose? Those five of clubs? There we go. That's quite strange uh, when, you, uh, when you think about it. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, when I first saw this done by the gentleman who gave me, gave me the picture, I thought that he must have a special flick of the wrist. But this is a real magic picture. Look, the card goes right into the center of the deck. Just push it like so. Stefan, take the picture, and I'm going to ask you to give it a little shake. Go on. And there you go, Stefan. You too must be uh, a real magician. I prefer if you didn't smoke, well, because firstly, it damages your health, and secondly, because I find you such nice people that I would like to teach you a trick that will amaze your friends. Well, what do you say? So, imagine you've lit some candles, you've created the atmosphere, you've borrowed a cigarette, and what you do is you concentrate, and suddenly, this happens. In any case, uh, I said I'd explain it to you, but uh, just uh, just let me do it again. Voila. In fact, what happens is I inhale with the right nostril and exhale with the left. And uh, this is this is basically what happens. Watch it. 
So, remember, if one day you meet someone strange looking like myself, who has their nose covered, their mouth covered, and still manages to make a cigarette roll, it is at that moment that you will have met a real magician. Hello there, gentlemen. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think we met before in a, in a previous effect. I'm glad you came along because, as it happens, I need three people to help me with this. In magician's jargon, we call this a routine. We're going to act out a play in which each of you will have a role. You there, sir, can I just ask you your name? Inspector Lolita. Well, Inspector, let me introduce you to your two crooks. You can tell that they are crooks by their faces. So, both of you are going to play the role of the crooks. And for that, I'm going to ask each of you to choose a playing card. But, as you probably know, Inspector Lolita sometimes has problems sorting out his affairs. Isn't that right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to give him some help. For example, we're going to give him... Uh, the first joker and the second joker, which is right here. There you go. Sorry, what are your names? Jonky and Poot Poot. Jonky and Poot Poot. We have spectators with some very strange names here today. Go ahead, uh, Jonky. I'll try to remember your name. Go ahead and mix the cards as you like. While you're doing that, I just want to point out to the spectators, because we have people looking in at us, that the two inspectors that will help Lolita, we will put them, for the moment, into my pocket. Okay. There we go. So the idea is, you've uh, mixed the deck. Lolita, you're going to pick a card from the deck which will represent you and place it on the table in front of you. And I'm going to ask you both to do exactly the same thing. They seem very uh, friendly for, for crooks. jean he has a very strange name, but we're not going to worry about that. So, everybody has chosen a card. You can turn them over. It doesn't really matter for the, for the routine. Inspector, I would like you to sign your name across the card that you chose. Here you go, take the pen. So you just write on the card, Lolita. So I'm going to ask you both to do the same thing. Go ahead and uh, write your names across your chosen cards. Thank you very much. Put Put and jean I'm just going to put this here. So, yeah, there we go. So you'll remember that I have Lolita's two assistants in my pocket, which we are undoubtedly going to need. The first crook, the ten of spades, runs off down the street with his partner in crime close behind. There are so many people, we have no way of finding him as he disappears into the crowd. He leaves no trace that will allow us to find him. Here we go. After having found his hiding place, he calls his friend Put Put. Have a good look at his face. The six of diamonds. He too also disappears into the crowd. This is where Inspector Lolita comes in, the Jack of Spades. With his two assistants, of course, who you will remember are in my pockets, they are going to inspect the streets. And of course, he spots them in the crowd. Yes, he has found you both. But instead of intervening alone, he says to himself it, it would be better if he called his two friends the Jokers, because these two crooks happen to be very dangerous individuals. As I said, in my pockets, the inspector has his two assistants, the Jokers. Watch carefully, and you will see why he chose them as his assistants. It wasn't by chance. The first Joker enters the street, the second does likewise. And we clap our hands, and in the blink of an eye, he finds them both. There you go, Inspector. You can take them away.
Voilà, bonjour mesdames. Bonjour. Vous allez bien En oui. forme oui. Est-ce que vous avez déjà entendu parler de l'effet papillon Non. Non, non. Bon, C'est étonnant, je vous explique un peu ça. C'est pas très compliqué, on va pas faire un, un, un développement scientifique de, de la chose, mais imaginez simplement un papillon qui remue des ailes en Afrique. Mmh. Ok Certains prétendent, certains prétendent en effet que ça peut procurer, produire une tempête à des mmh. milliers de kilomètres, et cela 15 jours plus tard. Étonnant. C'est un peu, si vous voulez, si on se penche un peu sur la signification philosophique du sujet, on peut dire que parfois dans sa vie on fait une petite chose et ça a des conséquences énormes. Voilà l'idée. Je vais vous demander, s'il vous plaît, de mélanger le jeu. Quel est votre prénom Mélanie. Mélanie, c'est magnifique. Allez-y, mélangez le jeu. Voilà. Ok. Et alors, je ne vais pas reprendre le jeu, Mélanie. Vous allez simplement continuer de le mélanger. Mmh. Vous allez simplement tendre la main droite. Je oui. Et poser le jeu, c'est parfait, au bout de vos doigts. Formidable. Voilà, on va imaginer, par exemple, Mélanie, que tout à coup, vous êtes en Asie. On va vous faire les yeux bridés, je suis sûr que... Ça va très bien, vous allez... Vous allez, s'il vous plaît, couper le jeu en deux et m'en donner la moitié. Allez-y. Il est magnifique pour faire l'effet papillon. Vous savez, ça, c'est formidable. Alors, moi, je suis ici, en Afrique, Mélanie. Et cette carte-là, là où vous avez coupé, juste ici, et cette carte, c'est un trois de trèfle. On peut dire que le trèfle représentera tout simplement la tempête. En revanche, la dame de cœur, ici, voyez-vous, c'est le papillon d'amour, bien sûr, le papillon d'Afrique. Et regardez... Quand le papillon remue des ailes en Afrique, une tornade se crée dans les airs, elle traverse toute la planète. Et quelques moments plus tard, elle provoque une tempête à des milliers de kilomètres de là. Voyez-vous, Mélanie ah, Je vous remercie, c'est bizarre. Ouais. Lucie, Lucie, vous vous rappelez sans doute, quand vous étiez adolescente, vous faisiez sûrement des ricochets dans l'eau. Oui. Bah, écoutez, je vous propose... Euh... Petite illustration magique pour vous replonger dans les mémoires de votre, de votre enfance. Allez-y, mélangez le, le jeu si vous voulez. Oui. Rapidement, comme ça. Et puis vous posez le jeu ici. Et je vais vous demander également de le couper en deux parties égales. Voilà. Donc, vous vous imaginez tout simplement au bord d'une rivière avec un caillou dans la main. Et vous le lancez sur l'eau. Et ce dont je vous parlais à l'instant, les ricochets se produisent. L'un à la suite de l'autre. C'est magique. C'est à vous de jouer.